Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Every now and then, you'll get the chance to talk to someone who is an expert in their field. Today, I had the privilege of talking to Jessica Beck, a former IELTS examiner of 14 years, who has dedicated her life to helping students get high scores on this one standardized English test. She knows it like the back of her hand. In other words, she knows it very well. If you're interested in living overseas, studying abroad, working abroad, you will need to have proof of your English knowledge. And the IELTS exam is one of the ways to do it. The test is accepted pretty much everywhere nowadays. Of course, you'll need to do your research to make sure that this is the test you'll need for your plans. In today's episode, you'll get an overview of the IELTS exam. You'll hear why it might be useful for you. You'll learn some tricks to deal with the anxiety of speaking in a foreign language, especially in test situations. And here's some insider tips on how to impress the examiner. Jessica, who was also part of the All Ears English podcast and IELTS Energy podcast, has packed her years of experience into a test prep course called the Three Keys IELTS Success System. If you are interested in taking the IELTS, I highly recommend signing up for the Personal Coach Plan. This will give you access to the study plan and lectures, but also to personalized one-on-one classes with expert IELTS coaches to help you get a seven or higher on the exam. There are so many students who serve as proof that the structure, methodology, and just the system in general works. As a listener of the American English Podcast, you will receive a $50 off coupon if you sign up with me. Links are provided on the episode webpage and also in the show notes. Once again, if you want to live, work, or study overseas, and if IELTS is one of the tests you can take to accomplish your goals, which is highly likely, consider taking the three keys IELTS to avoid having to take this test twice. Nobody wants to do that. Not fun. (laughs) So be sure to sign up through the link I provide to get that $50 off. Without any further ado, I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Shauna. Thank you so much for having me today. I am so excited to finally talk to you. I've heard the All Ears English podcast many times before, and I know you work very closely with Lindsay and Michelle. Michelle. So I know it's it's a lot. (laughs) Um, The All Ears English podcast for sure is enormous, and that's Mostly Lindsay and Michelle. Sometimes Aubrey and I are on there, but I mostly focus on the IELTS podcast. So we have another whole different podcast called IELTS Energy. Great. And what do you talk about on the IELTS Energy podcast? You know, (laughs) it's amazing to me that we have over, I think we're like around 1,500 episodes now. Wow. And that we could still be talking about IELTS. So, yeah, we have a great time on IELTS Energy. We talk about strategies mm-hmm. for finding reading answers quickly, for understanding the listening exam, stuff like that. But we also do sample speaking answers, pronunciation lessons, wow, a um, lot. lots of great vocabulary episodes as well. Uh-huh. So, I think even if you're not studying for IELTS, you can learn a lot from our IELTS podcast. Very cool. That's called IELTS Energy, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Perfect. So for today's episode, I actually would like to get to know who Jessica is. Jessica has a really (laughs) in-depth background in teaching English, in 
writing textbooks from what I understood from my stalking you online. (laughs) And uh, I would like to know a little bit more about how you got started in teaching English, how you got started in this field in general. Um, Oh, wow. Wow, that's going back. That makes I me know. feel kind of <laughs> old. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I started teaching English in Cambodia, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point, you know, I was in my 20s. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people get started this way. I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just teach and travel. Yep. <laughs> then, um, I did you get started in the same way? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I was yeah. in Spain, though. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. yeah. I got my um my teaching certificate in Spain actually oh. in Barcelona. But anyway, cool. so yeah, but then I figured out, I'm sure like you did, that oh my gosh, this is this is what I want to do with my life. This is what I right. love. So I decided to go back to school and get a master's degree in applied linguistics. And while I was doing that, I moved to Taiwan and started teaching there. And one of my first jobs in Taiwan was teaching at an IELTS school. Like it only, yeah, like specialized in this exam preparation. So after getting my master's and getting that experience, I became an IELTS examiner. At that time, I also started working for a couple different publishers in Taiwan, um, Cengage and Macmillan mostly, and I got to start writing textbooks. So at this point, I have written and published 16 textbooks. Um, and I It's a lot of textbooks. Congratulations. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot of textbooks. And it just goes to show how much knowledge you have in the subject of ESL. (laughs) Yes, I have lived and breathed ESL for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and actually I have a new project coming out, a seven book series for young learners. So that'll be one of my main focuses for the next year. That's going to take a while. (laughs) Is that by chance the Donut Mysteries? I found something online. Jessica no. Beck, who wrote the Donut <laughs> Mysteries. <laughs> I know. That's so funny. No, she's a totally different person. Yeah, I know. I found that too when I like Googled myself. I was like, are there reviews for our IELTS course? And like I would Google and then I would come up with this, you know, mystery fiction writer with the same name. <laughs> All about donuts, actually. Donuts and baking. I and I was thinking maybe so this weird. is a, you know, side gig she has. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, I wish. That would okay. be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have had 14 years of teaching IELTS then like examining or what what exactly is your experience with IELTS itself and what is IELTS sorry to go back a little bit (laughs) IELTS stands for um like like in ESL there are a billion acronyms for everything right Mm -hmm. but we have TESOL and CELTA and ESL so IELTS stands for the International English Language Testing System Um, so it's a standardized English exam but there are two different versions and they are both very important. They're both like gatekeepers for people to move on in their lives. So the academic IELTS is for people who want to study in English universities. Could be in any country. I mean, we have people who want to get a master's in Germany, for example, but that school Mm. teaches in English. So they still require IELTS. So That's the academic side. And then the general exam is for people who want to immigrate to English speaking countries, mainly Canada and Australia. Those are the Mm. two most common mm, motivations to Mm -hmm. uh, take the general the general exam. We have a lot of students, especially Brazilian students who want mm-hmm. to move to Canada. And so they need gotcha. to get a certain score on their IELTS test. Right. Um, but it's, you know, it's a standardized English exam. So it has yeah. four different sections for each of the skills, listening, reading, writing, speaking. However, there are very important differences between IELTS and TOEFL and the myriad of other Cambridge English tests. So if you want to prepare for IELTS, you really need to focus 
on IELTS. You can't just do okay. like general academic English test prep. That's that's not going to cut it. So why would someone choose IELTS over the TOEFL or TOEIC exams or any of the other ones that uh, are out there? Yeah, good question. It just depends on the student's target, you know, on what their goal is. Guys, if you're listening right now and you're curious, you're like, hmm, what would be better for me to take? First, you need to be clear about your own goals, and that goal will dictate which exam you have to take, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want students to spend all of the time and the resources to prepare for the wrong exam, right? Because like Mm -hmm. I said, you have to focus on one test. So Mm -hmm. TOEIC is, I know it's very popular in Japan especially, but Mm -hmm. TOEIC is for workplace English. It's more of a, a certification or a score that you want to put on a resume if Mm. the employers Mm. where you live care about that. And I know Mm -hmm. in a lot of countries like Japan, as I said, TOEIC does matter. Like it looks great on your resume or on your CV if you Mm -hmm. have a certain score. So because it's just workplace English, it is a little bit easier than these other tests. Um, TOEFL and IELTS are often used for similar purposes, but Mm -hmm. TOEFL is the American version and IELTS is, it's a joint effort between Australia IDP and Cambridge in England. So IELTS is more accepted internationally, but honestly, like, Every university, even in America, accepts IELTS now. Like IELTS is everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's interesting. Before getting into all of the projects I got into related to English, I used to work at a J-1 visa sponsor uh, in, in New York City. And I used to have to test people who didn't take the IELTS or TOEFL or other exams. Yes, and see how their English level was. They had the option to take the exam and just have it on a piece of paper and show me and, you know, be able to be, you know, accepted by the Department of State to get this J-1 visa. But a lot of people that didn't have it, you know, they had to go through these really stressful interviews on their part because they didn't have that piece of paper. And I thought, wow, that's so unnecessary. You can just take this test and, you know, get it over with. Just get that piece of paper. Have something available for when that moment arises and you need to show someone, you know, that you have that level of English. So we we talk a lot about this idea on the the IELTS podcast, especially we talk a lot about controlling what you can. Right. Mm -hmm. Because like, you know, as an English teacher, as a professional in this field, one of the biggest obstacles is just this anxiety, this yes. lack of confidence, this fear, right? Yes, um, exactly. It's it's not just English. It's not just the language. It's it's your feelings about the language and about yourself in the language. So this idea of like controlling what you can, I would much rather decide when I'm going to take this test, be able to make a study plan for myself. Or use our three keys study plans that we make for you. Um, (laughs) Yes, we'll get to that. I'm so curious to know more. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but like have control over all of that, right? And feel like Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing my best. Compared to being stressed out on the telephone in English. And come on, like talking on the phone in another language is way harder than doing a scripted listening test, right? Right. (laughs) So true. Now, so this is interesting for me because you come across as very confident. Everything that you say (laughs) is to the point. I mean, you're very well-spoken. Obviously, you've had years of practice. (laughs) But I'm curious to know, do you have any tips for being confident in English or kind of getting rid of that anxiety the anxiety that comes from being in a test situation? Yeah, for sure. Um, two, two sides of that, actually, like before you need it and while you're using it, right? So right. it's not just for a test situation. I mean, these ideas can be put toward before a presentation, before a work meeting. I mean, any situation that you know of ahead of time, guys, you need to prepare. As a non-native, you can't hold yourself to the same standard as a native speaker. 
you must add a couple steps of preparation before you go into any situation. So specifically for the test, speaking, right? That's the scariest part for a lot of students. You need to talk to yourself out loud every day for 20 minutes and Mm -hmm. don't just answer test questions like Google conversation prompts. Just like search that you could have this list of hundreds of weird questions Mm -hmm. and just practice out loud by yourself. So you're not nervous, right? But you have to make yourself use English out loud if you expect to be okay on test day. I also like encouraging students to ask a friend to be an examiner. If you have a friend who Hmm. even knows a bit of English, all they have to do is read these questions out loud. But if you practice the speaking exam with a friend, you guys are going to laugh. You're going to feel silly. And you know what? It develops this positive image of the exam. So when you go into the test, you're staring at that examiner who honestly might be kind of old and mean looking and certainly maybe sort of cold towards you. They Mm want to throw you off, right? Instead, just picture like, oh, I'm just talking to my friend. And you could be a lot more fluent than if you're like panicking. Right. Um, so there's there's the one side of it, right? Preparing mm-hmm. beforehand. But then on test day, guys, we really like to encourage short meditation techniques to overcome panic and anxiety. In fact, in our course, we have a whole anti-anxiety module. And again, this goes for any situation, guys. If you find your mind is spinning out of control, if you realize that you are living in your head too much and you're not paying attention to the conversation around you because you're too nervous, just pause, right? Two things you can do. Take a couple deep breaths. (laughs) No problem there. That doesn't hurt your fluency. And also another thing is to feel your feet on the floor. This is just Mm -hmm. a way of grounding yourself in the present Mm -hmm. just to reset like hit the reset button, right? And then start over, refocus. It's so interesting how the body, like just being connected to your body can relieve some of the stress that's happening in your brain. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that's a big part of meditation and those techniques, I'm sure, I mean, if managed, if someone can do it well, can probably really help when there's that mean cold person in front of them, which hopefully that wouldn't happen to um, (laughs) some of the listeners if they're taking the test. There are a lot of great Mm. examiners for sure. I mean, I was an examiner Mm. for 14 years. Like I'm, I'm a pretty nice person. I don't think I scared people, Um, but there are some scary people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, Shauna, do you, do you meditate? No, I don't. But you know what? Um, A friend of mine, we were actually talking about this somewhat recently, and he was just saying that you know, a lot of the techniques he learns is by getting rid of some of the, you know, toxic energy and just sort of conversation loop that you have in your head, you know, and basically how the body communicates and says, you know, first of all, you're thinking I'm stressed. I don't want to talk right now. I don't, I don't feel like I'm competent enough to have a conversation with this person. Then your body starts reacting. You start to have the jitters and then you start to feel your heart race. And because your body's having those reactions, your head starts thinking, oh, shoot, I'm feeling this. I am really nervous right now. And it kind of exponentially makes the situation worse. That is such a great description of the the, like the survival sort of stress response that that our bodies have. Right. Like your mental stress and your physical stress and and your gut, just like everything in your system, you guys, is connected so even just taking a step out of the situation right and Mm -hmm. like you said feeling your body trying to slow your breath slow your heart that will decrease your anxiety like it's directly connected for sure that's great so I think there are probably some other uh, ideas to feel more prepared for this exam one of the things that I think is particularly interesting are these cue cards. Can you describe what the cue card is or what part of the exam this is for? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So the speaking test, guys, is in three parts. And pay attention to this description, you guys, because you'll see (laughs) how it's unique, how IELTS is weird, right? Like, because every test is different, right? So three parts. The first part is 
personal. It's easy. It's relaxed. So there are questions like, do you enjoy shopping? Tell me about your daily routine. Do you use an alarm clock? Like these are just like (laughs) easy, fun questions, right? So guys, your responses have to match that tone, which means the examiner must hear relaxed intonation, right? Like, relaxed pronunciation, and also informal vocabulary, because that Mm. matches the tone of the questions. And then we move into speaking part two, which is the cue card you talked about. So Mm -hmm. the examiner will give you a cue card. There's one sentence on the top, like, describe a famous building in your city. It's always asking (laughs) you to describe something. It will be an object, event, person, or place. And then there'll be three bullet points under that just to like give you clues about what Mm -hmm. you can say. But here's the interesting part, guys. You do not have to talk about those bullet points at all, which is surprising for a lot of students. But the examiner doesn't care, guys. We don't care. You just have to talk for two minutes. Yeah. I I honestly did not know that. (laughs) Yeah. It seems like if it's there, you have to respond to that. And that's one of the things that even being a native speaker – It would stress me out beyond belief if someone asked me, you know, talk about some historical sporting event that you would like to see. I would go, (laughs) oh, like, I don't know, you know. It's so hard. (laughs) Yeah. But if I was able to, you know, speak off the cuff, you know, um, without preparation and kind of just go what's on my mind. And so that would be acceptable then if I just kind of, I don't know, talked about something somewhat related, maybe a tangent would be acceptable? Yes. I love that question. Yes. So here is a huge advantage, guys, of learning about this exam from someone like me who has been an examiner and actually knows what you're graded on, right? Because there's a lot of teachers out there that will say, you have to talk about those bullet points. It has to be perfectly organized. You need a conclusion, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. You know what? None of that is true. And If you follow that advice, your fluency goes down. I mean, think about it. Like, if you think you have to talk about these three bullet points, then we pause, we look down, and we address each point. You know what I mean? Like, it's not connected. However, if you approach it naturally... If you follow the tree branches, like if you're if your topic <laughs> is a tree, right? Our mind doesn't work straight organized in an organized way. Yeah. There are branches. Guys, you have to follow those branches and that will make you seem like a native natural speaker. Like right. Imagine this, right? I'm talking about this building and then I'm like, "Oh, you know what? As a side note, I actually know someone who helped build it or something. I don't know. But these sorts of things like, oh, as a side note, I -hmm. mean, that's a great transition phrase that students don't use very often. So in part two, you do have one minute to take notes, though. And that is so important. Write down everything you think of, any detail that comes to mind. And then while you're talking, you can look down at those notes. Like you can just stare at them and talk if you want to. But yeah, you don't have to have a perfectly organized story because you know what? That's not natural. And if you want a seven or higher, you have to communicate naturally. So that's part two. And then part three, guys, just real fast, is more like abstract questions. That's how IELTS describes it. But Mm -hmm. they're just harder questions about the world at large and society. And the topics are always connected to part two. So If part two is like, describe a problem you had while traveling, then part three would be about tourism and, you know, airline travel or whatever. So they're just, they're harder questions. And again, your tone has to match that. So you must use more formal vocabulary, higher level transitions, and give like real solid examples as well, which is hard and it does take practice. Right. So it sounds like you need to have a wide range of English knowledge in order to I mean, master each of these sections well, right? I mean, it's not like you can go in with without having any preparation, without learning specific things and having a strategy and get a high score. Oh, totally. I mean, as an examiner, I had to examine native speakers as well because um, I know (laughs) it's always very (laughs) fine. I know I would always ask them after the test. I'm like, 
do you mind? Why are you here? Um, so they, like Americans, would have to take the IELTS exam if they wanted to have certain jobs in like healthcare, like be a nurse oh. in Canada or the UK, especially nursing, I noticed was okay. common to require this. So it's just, you know, if you're not from that country, you have to meet these same requirements. And I can tell you guys, like, so many native speakers did not get nines on the speaking exam because they couldn't speak for two minutes in part two because it's weird. And the part three questions are also kind of weird. And they would give like really short answers sometimes. So, I mean, you really have to know the exam and know what the examiner wants, but also improve your English at the same time because it is an English test. <laughs> yes. Okay, so three keys IELTS, it's pretty much 50-50 then with preparation for the exam as well as, you know, developing language skills. Yes. So that's how I designed the study plan for sure. Okay. So we we have courses for the academic or the general, right? Because they're mm -hmm. a little bit different. We won't go into that here. Um, but there's also two different ways it is delivered these days. So there's a paper version, which is the most common. But there's also a computer-delivered IELTS version. Mm -hmm. And we have courses for both of those. I actually went to Canada to take the computer-delivered IELTS exam because oh. it's not offered where I live in Oregon. And I did that so I could, you know, perfect our strategies and make sure everything worked or whatever. So we have a course just for that as well. So it is a complete IELTS course. As I said, there's also an anti-anxiety module. The course itself... All of the lectures and practice and answer lectures and all of that stuff, guys, all of those lessons are about the testing skills. But the study plan, this is, this is where the gold is. And a lot of our success stories, our students say they could not have done this without the study plan because we tell you exactly what to do every day to make sure you get all of that IELTS practice you need and improve your overall English at the same time. So there's a 30-day plan and a 60-day plan because those are the most common lengths of time that students mm -hmm. study for. So just for example, let's say we're into the listening module. So today you would watch the video lesson about listening completion questions and then you mm -hmm. would do that practice and then you would continue that lesson to hear my answers and learn why they're the answers. But then on the study plan for that day, we would also ask you to go to this specific podcast, read the transcript at the same time, mm -hmm. maybe Fresh Air or another NPR podcast that's mm -hmm. made for natives. So we're challenging you to improve all the time. I love that. So is it possible for people to join at any period of time? Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. yeah. The beauty of online learning, <laughs> right? I mean, you have the same advantage with your material. Guys, you can start to study with us at any time. Everything is completely online, accessible 24-7. You could check out the options at allearsenglish.com slash K-E-Y-S. It's not just 30 or 60 days of access either. You get six months of access to the course. So even if you're like, oh, I'm not sure about this IELTS. I, I know I need to take it, but not for a while. Maybe, maybe five months from now, I'll take the exam. I think you should go ahead and get in the course and start the study plan, mm -hmm. at least for the, like, the overall English improvement. And once you're in, you can be in our Facebook group. You can interact with other really motivated students, practice speaking, you know, get feedback on your ideas. We're always in there, our IELTS experts answering questions. So you have access to insider IELTS experts like me in the Facebook group as well all the time. So there are a lot of advantages to getting in there. And you know what? We have some students who just want to prove to themselves 
that their English is amazing. And so they take yes. IELTS just because they want to. And that's also great. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the idea of being able to get checked before taking an exam. If someone told me, you know what, right now your level is at a seven or you're at an eight, say, say you say I'm at an eight, then yeah. I go in. Yeah, I would feel so confident going like, OK, I can relax. I know that I have this higher level in English like totally. than you know what is needed say I need a seven for whatever I need to do then that's just such a relief to have that feedback beforehand yeah, yeah. I totally. love that. Yeah. Well, I mean, gosh, I, if you just Google like IELTS, IELTS teacher, IELTS course, guys, mm -hmm. you're going to get thousands, thousands of results. And it's so tricky. There are a lot of great IELTS experts out there. I'm certain of it. I mean, some of my friends are IELTS experts out mm -hmm. there for sure. But guys, there are also a lot of teachers who just say they know about IELTS right. and they might be great English teachers for sure, but they don't know this exam and yes. I mean I hope if anything guys if one thing you take away today is that IELTS is unique and difficult and you really need to focus right. on the insider like what is this test about if you're gonna pass it and we oh my gosh we just talked about speaking I mean we've just yep. skimmed the surface the writing let's not even get into it because that's a right. whole other show so it's really stressful, like if you're trying to do it by yourself. Yeah, right. It's stressful, but it can also be fun too. like the prep work. Say, for example, I'm that guy that's like, oh, I just want to improve my language skills and I just want to prove to myself I have a 7.5, for example. Yeah. Am I going to have fun, you know, if I'm trying to kill two <laughs> birds with one stone and take exam prep, like say, for example, the totally. uh, IELTS keys, will I also have fun during the process? <laughs> you will. You totally will. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Shauna, you're asking the best questions. So, oh, <laughs> I mean, I started teaching IELTS in a classroom before I was even an examiner, right? Right. And I've always loved teaching test prep, yes. which is bonkers. I mean, this is crazy, you guys. I, I am kind of a crazy person. <laughs> Maybe it's that, that extra challenge of here is this dry test material and I have to rise to the challenge of making it fun, making it entertaining and engaging. Because you know what, guys, if you're not enjoying your studies and it doesn't matter what you're studying, could be a test, could be business English, whatever. If you're not engaged, you are not going to learn. So exactly. Like, Thank you. That's impossible. exactly how I feel. <laughs> yes. um, so this is like just another huge advantage of studying with Three Keys IELTS because it is fun. You guys, I am the person that gives you all of the lectures and I promise you all of these activities I ask you to do to improve your English are fun. I only recommend sitcoms that I love. I only recommend <laughs> podcasts that are amazing. Yes. So like, guys, it's awesome. And you know what? If you're listening and you're like, okay, I still am not sold on this IELTS thing. I don't know if I have to take it. Again, it's cool. You don't have to like buy our course right away. Just dip your toe in. See if it's yeah. something that might help you in your future. You never know. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll get motivated and you'll say, oh, oh my gosh, I do want to challenge myself to change my life, right? So guys, just check out our podcast. It's IELTS Energy. We also have a YouTube channel, IELTS Energy TV. And you can find out for free what you would get on the IELTS exam just for fun. Just if you took it now, we have a free IELTS quiz and you get resources I made for you. So you could see that at allearsenglish.com slash my score. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. So it sounds like you shared everything that is like the nuts and bolts of this exam. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the listeners that are out there? Yeah. You know what, guys? Um, I would love for you to find some positive motivation and inspiration by listening to some of the students that we've had on our show. Mm. I love inviting students to come on the podcast yes. and talk about their experiences. A lot of them have worked so hard to get the scores they need on IELTS. And these are 
you know, moms with young babies that managed to do this. <laughs> These are people who took the test 10 times before they found us and then finally got the scores they needed. Recently, I interviewed, oh my gosh, okay, last thing, I promise. <laughs> Because it's no, so that's fun. I, I, I love hearing this stuff. So keep going. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorite things. And it's very recent, guys. So look for um, Nikolai's podcast. I'll find the number while I'm describing it. Um, so Nikolai was on the show like five years ago because he took mm -hmm. our course and he passed the test. And then he moved to Canada and he's just amazing. So recently, guys, um, IELTS Energy episode 1051, I interviewed Nikolai again just to see what is your life like? Oh, You're done with yeah. IELTS. You, you did all that hard work. Like, did it pay off? What did this get you? Mm -hmm. Guys, he has his own podcast. He's living in Canada. Wow. He has super cool dreads. Like, he's <laughs> just this awesome guy from Russia who's living his dream. And you could just hear him describe how amazing it is to work so hard and see that success. And it's just yes. a very fun episode. You can also watch it on YouTube because there's mm. a video of us talking. So yeah. that's IELTS Energy 1051 with right. Nikolai. Love that. Thank you. Definitely IELTS can be a hurdle, it sounds yeah. like. But at the same time, it's doable. And seeing sort of that end result, the people reaching the point in their life where they're like, this is the dream I had and I, and I got there totally. because I overcame a challenge, a test, you know, it's yeah. like one test. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. And I think this is one sort of reason I love teaching test prep so much is, you know, as a teacher, we always want our students to succeed. Like we mm -hmm. are honestly like we are your guys's biggest cheerleaders. We love you and we want you to work hard and we have high expectations for you because we know you can meet them, yes. right? Like we can make stuff hard for you because we want you to learn and we're so happy when you do. But here's the thing about test prep I love so much is that there is this black and white tangible evidence of like, oh, you learned and you got this and you did it, right? Yes. I mean, sometimes with just general fluency, it's hard to know. Everyone has different goals, different yes. measurements for that success. But with IELTS, it's like, all right, you're starting out of five. I'm going to get you to an eight. Here's what you do. And then you do it and we're like, ah, it worked. And it's really exciting. <laughs> I love organization. I am a really big language learner. And the years I've spent going about here and there trying to see if I could cut back, you know, maybe, oh, I'll book a teacher that doesn't have experience just to get the language practice in. Oh, oh I'll do this. Yes. You know, I ended up spending so much time being a little bit of a cheapskate, to be honest. Oh um, my gosh, I am too, for sure. <laughs> so, because I don't want to put money in because I actually didn't have very much money at the time thinking that I was going to be able to, you know, see the results I wanted. And a lot of it comes down yeah. to structure. It comes down to organization. It comes down to like really having the right methodologies in front of you to get where you want to go. Right. And so I love that. You, you know, but that's such a, a, a nice way to, to prove that point, though. It's so true. It's like we get to we get to a certain phase of life, right? You're yes. not you're not 20 anymore. You're not like scrimping your pennies and dimes or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're adults at this point, right? You need to respect yourself and your time. Maybe you have a family, you have a job, at least you have a life, right? You're an adult. Yes, I, I think our priorities should be ourselves, investing in ourselves, respecting ourselves. So if this is really a goal of yours, then go ahead and check out the system. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was really nice talking to you. I can't believe 40 minutes already passed. That's insane. <laughs> That was super fun, Shauna. Thank you so, so much for inviting me to come on the show. You're always welcome. <laughs> 40 minutes. I do love talking about IELTS. So students out there, if you do have any more questions about IELTS, maybe maybe I can come on the show again. Yes, or... you're always welcome. Always welcome. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Awesome. <laughs> All Thanks, right. Shana. Bye, Jessica. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Jessica. Isn't she just a wealth of knowledge? <laughs> I really enjoyed talking to her. She's got such energy. She is a very knowledgeable teacher. She lives and breathes IELTS. I wish I had the knowledge that she has to guide you more. But since I don't, 
I became an affiliate of the IELTS Keys course. If you want the privilege of talking to her and using the structure and method that has been proven with her and her colleagues, then be sure to sign up to the IELTS Keys course. As a listener of the American English Podcast, you get a $50 off coupon. So be sure to use the link provided in the episode notes or also on the episode webpage to get that discount. Once again, you have to use the link provided in the episode notes. If you have any questions, send them over to me. I'm so happy to have Jessica back on this podcast again. And yeah, until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.